And and so it yeah. seems like to me, your project is this answer to someone who's sitting at that crossroads and going, oh my goodness, what do I do? Because Christianity says I got to follow this to my true, my supposed to be my true joy, God, but I love all this stuff. How, how do you keep from sinning at that point? What decision yeah. do you got to make? Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, you know, so in, in that letters to Malcolm section, he talks about, he's, he, he goes even more basic and he just says, look, pleasures are shafts of the glory of God as it strikes our senses. Mm -hmm. So, and he says, and, and he says, um, the glory of God, when it strikes different faculties of the human person, we give it different names. So when the glory of God um, strikes our um, mind, what, what's the word for that? And we say truth. Yes. When, when the glory of God strikes our will, when it, when it impinges on our will, we call it goodness. When the glory of God strikes our senses, what do we call it? And then we call it pleasure. And so mm -hmm. pleasures, like little pleasures, little, little p, plural, um, are expositions of invitations to the ultimate glory, um, which means you can't deny them in, in this total sense. So Lewis has a real note. He does have notions of self-denial. We can talk about that. Like what is a Christian mm -hmm. vision of self-denial? But he, but he wants to start with, this is a good thing that's meant to lead you back to God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And then my little addendum to that is, and every good and perfect gift is an invitation to come up to the Father of lights. It comes down from him and is meant to lead you back to him. He's the Father of lights. That's the sunbeam. Chase it back uh, to the source, which means you can't, this is the, this is the basic, um, this is where I think Christians go wrong is, well, if I, but if I can have the sun, why would I keep the sunbeams? Yeah. And it's like, well, right. you can't get to the sun without the sunbeams. <clears throat> That's just, God's not built the world that way. Um, so my, the, 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 the Bible passage that often does this for me, it's the sort of paradigm um, that I come back to again and again is in the book of Proverbs. I think it's in Proverbs 24. I always forget actually wh which particular text, but it's um, uh, Solomon says, um, eat honey, my son, eat honey for it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Like this is, so this is an exhortation it's in the Bible. Eat honey be, just because it's good and it's sweet. Yes. Um, and then he says, know that wisdom is such to your soul. And the, it's a simple, obvious point, but it's, there's two exhortations in that, in that proverb, eat honey and know that wisdom yeah. is such to your soul. And you cannot obey the second one unless you've obeyed the first. It's impossible. Like there's no way for you to know wisdom is like this to my soul unless you've actually eaten honey simply because it's good. You don't have the mm. categories. You don't have the experience. You can't get there. Um, and so like last, so actually last year at uh, Thanksgiving, uh, D Desiring God had me write a little reflection on this. And I did a little dialogue, sort of Socratic dialogue, fictional with, with my son. And, uh, and it was on honey and like what this amazing, how, where does honey come from? How does it work? And it's all about bees and flowers and mm. nectar and, and how honey is this sort of, honey is glorified nectar. Right. So, yes, um, yes. like, so, so nectar is what's in flowers. Honey's glorified nectar. Well, nectar is actually glorified water. So plants just pull up water from the roots and they have photosynthesis. It, they, the magic process that glorifies water and turns it into nectar. Bees come along and eat it and, and eat the nectar <laughs> and it goes into a stomach and they, it's honey's actually like bee vomit, which is just a crazy, <laughs> just this crazy <laughs> thing. They actually digest it. And then they, they go back and they spit it up and it, and they've, it's purified, it's glorified. <clears throat> and so um, nectar is glorified water, honey is glorified nectar. Well, does the glorification continue after honey? And the answer is yes. How, do, how does that happen? Well, it's when a human being eats honey because it's good. And then the glorification is God is like this. It's yes. the mind and the heart of a human being that takes honey and glorifies it, meaning meaning takes it to another level, one degree of glory to another. What's honey supposed, what's honey for? Well, the mm -hmm. word of God is sweeter than honey. It's, you know, um, you know, the word of God is more precious than silver, more, more, more valuable than gold, and it's sweeter than honey. Um, and so you're supposed to eat the honey and then go, God is better. God is like this, but better. Uh, that's how you take honey from one degree of glory to, to another.